I love that in your notes you point out the confusion, right? The US keeps saying, you know, we've gained some great concessions and negotiations with China. Beijing says we haven't negotiated and we won't negotiate over these threats. I think uh, maybe China have a very narrow definition about the negotiation. <laughs> so they don't talk about, the, you know, detailed terms. But I'm sure that uh, among the top leadership, there are some dialogue between China and the U.S. in order to reach an uh, overall settlement between U.S. and China. What are you hearing in Beijing? I know you're a very well-connected man, and I also know, you know, much like Trump is playing to, to his domestic audience, she has a very nationalistic audience to play to as well. How quickly can we get to the point of an actual trade conflict? Indeed, I think all the communication uh, by U.S., by Trump, and by Chinese government are for their domestic audience only for the time being. I think uh, um, it's very difficult to foresee whether China and the U.S. can reach an uh, overall uh, settlement because it seems like that China were ready to you know, compromise on quite some substantial aspect of such a demand from U.S. On the other hand, U.S. seems to ask for 100 uh, percent satisfaction, otherwise there are no deal. So it's very difficult to foresee where we go uh, for this trade war. Can you foresee where we go? I mean, <laughs> well, this kind of carrot and stick thing that happened overnight, uh, what do you make of that? Well, I mean, the thing that strikes me, and, and I'd be interested to get, you know, your views on this as well, is that, uh, you know, as we saw with uh, Xi Jinping's speech at the Baal Forum, um, you know, the, most of the concessions that were offered were basically continuations of existing Beijing policy, things that, you know, this, this car thing we've seen overnight, I think it was first discussed about five years ago. Um, uh, you know, the opening up of further sectors on the negative list, this has been a ongoing process for more than 20 years. And one thing that strikes me when I look at what Robert Lighthizer, US trade negotiator, is saying, and I'm interested to get your views on this, is the core of their objections, a lot of it is to do with the role of the state in the economy and, and the role of state planning in, uh, in the development of the economy, which seem to me to be much more fundamental issues in China than, I, in some ways, I think Washington appreciates. What, what's your thoughts on that? It's true that uh, some people said the compromise made by China were kind of uh, old uh, promise made by China already in the past. So now with the with very pushy demand from Trump, maybe China are going to really implement uh, such a kind of commitment. Uh, in the old days, I think uh, some Chinese officials play with the time. They said maybe U.S. government will change their president, therefore why rush? Now, uh, Trump is a very, you know, hairy man. I mean, he really wants to push things through. Uh, maybe China will need to hurry up as well uh, so that we can prevent really a uh, uh, breakout of a real uh, trade war. I think your point is that they can't hurry on these things, right? If, if Washington's fundamental objective is the growth model, yeah. <laughs> they can't really. That's not something you can change with one summit or two summits or... Exactly. Well, that, I mean, and that is the thing I really wonder about, is I think there are, um, you know, as, as, as you've both been saying, there's this prospect for accelerating processes that Beijing already wants to advance. And I would have thought the, pro the prospects for that are good. But the thing I wonder about is that underlying that, there's a, there's a, there's a growing objection in Washington to essentially the the Chinese economic model. And that seems a much more radical thing and a thing where, you know, if, if, they, if these sort of cosmetic concessions are not sufficient, then the prospect of trade war goes up significantly.